Hey, welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Huynh Tuet Dao, and I'm speaking with... Christina Lee. And we are currently in New York for DroidCon New York, where both Christina and I are speaking. Christina, where are you based, and how did you get started in Android? Yeah, so I'm based in SF, and I'm currently an engineer with uh, Pinterest on the Android team there, formerly of MathCamp, which was a small startup, and we came in through an acquisition. So that's actually at MathCamp where I got my start in Android, and then now I'm continuing it at Pinterest. And I actually really like your talk because your talk is about something that's kind of like, I feel like it's really an up-and-coming topic um, in the Android community, and that is... Kotlin! Kotlin. (laughs) So are you giving an introductory talk on Kotlin? So I'm actually giving partially an introductory talk and partially an integration talk, which Mm -hmm. is that there's a lot of knowledge about what the language in particular is and Mm -hmm. and what its features are, Mm -hmm. but I think that there's less of a focus on how that integrates with Android in particular. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to do is cover some of the language features that specifically make a difference for Android, Mm -hmm. and then also talk about what it's like to roll out Kotlin use for a company as large as Pinterest. So for anyone who happens to not know what Kotlin is, can you kind of give us like a quick description of like what, okay, what is Kotlin? Yeah. So Kotlin is a language uh, built for the JVM, which means that it's interoperable with Java. However, it really seeks to address a lot of the issues in Java. Um, most notably, if you've ever heard of Kotlin, you've probably heard that it has type uh, built in null safety in the types. Uh, which is great, <laughs> and then it also has mutability protections. Things are vowels or they're vars, and so you're declaring whether mm-hmm. um, they can be reassigned or not. Mm-hmm. Again, uh, at declaration level. Sorry, yeah. it lo- sounds like a lot of stuff that people who've been doing Java might complain about sometimes. Exactly, and I think the big a lot of people talk about Java with the the verboseness of it. Right, and that's another Kotlin mm-hmm. selling point that everybody talks about is that it's concise, and mm-hmm. this is, I mean, it, it's hard to grasp just how concise it is until you compare them side by side. And mm-hmm. I've had the, the benefit of being able to compare Java files to their, <laughs> their translated Kotlin files. And it, it's almost to the level where it's probably about half, like a halfway reduction really? in, in lines. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Um, it's, it's really, really incredible how much we can pare down without giving up readability. Kotlin was developed by JetBrains, right? It was. Important factor because, of course, that means that it has great tooling uh, with Android Studio and also it's unlikely to be abandoned. You know, <laughs> something, something stable. Because there are other options out there and I think right. people talk about the other options a lot yeah, and they're yeah. great languages too, um, but it is nice to be using something that has kind of a, a good reputation behind it. We know that IntelliJ is a great brand. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. it's they're, they're kind of part of our daily lives as Android developers, exactly. since Android Studio is basically kind of like our our version of IntelliJ as well. So that's exactly. really cool. Yep. So like, and that, I think that's kind of interesting. I've, I've heard a lot of really awesome stuff about the cool language features of Kotlin, but at the same time, I feel like a lot of people think that they can't use Kotlin yet, but you, or rather Pinterest, actually have been using Kotlin yep. in production? Um, I I totally agree with you in terms of it is new and it's young and there are going to be some hiccups. The mm-hmm. way I look at it and and kind of talk to my managers and bosses about it is that Kotlin, even without all the other language features, mm-hmm. has the ability to completely eradicate NPEs. And, and when you look at code bases and you look at crash reports, uh, I, I've done this study on our own crash reports, mm-hmm. and that's a huge percentages, yeah. percentage of crashes that are reported. Right. And so when I was talking to my, my Android lead, I was saying, we can cut out you know 40% of crashes or whatever that number was just by using this language. And mm-hmm. even without the, the conciseness or the mutability or, or you know the really good type system, all of that, mm-hmm getting rid of 40% of bugs overnight is is incredible and, yeah. and super worthwhile for the business mm-hmm. despite hiccups of the early language. The, yeah, because that's definitely impactful to the user yeah. and not yeah. just, I mean, like th- when we talk about things like conciseness, I mean, it does eventually filter down to the user, but I think that's mostly kind of selfish like developer needs, but cutting exactly. out 40% of crashes is something that is obviously yeah. really good for your yeah. users. Exactly, and that's that's not the official number. It was very high, but just to like ballpark that. Yeah, so just but that's still clarify. very significant. That's an but, incri- that's, I mean, that's just a very significant yes, amount of crashes. It was a tremendous amount of crashes when I ran the query on NPEs, mm-hmm. and I think that it was it was certainly enough crashes that our users would, would notice the benefit to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and not to mention, you touched on it, it does make developers happy in general, too. There are some that want to stay with Java, and that's fine because mm-hmm. they're interoperable, but we've had a lot 
lot of people come in in interviews and say, hey, what do you think about Kotlin? Are you experimenting with it? Are you using it? And we get to sit there and say, yeah, as a matter of fact, we are. And I think that's that's always good to keep developers happy and have them enjoy their work. <laughs> Absolutely. Say like, they, you know, yeah. someone out there wants to be cool like you and introduce to the base, <laughs> to, to the code base. Like, what's a good, what are good first steps and what are some things to look out for or just some things to keep in mind when you're thinking about using Kotlin kind of more in a production type uh, situation? Yeah, so I think uh, without giving spoiler, you know, Oh yeah, not too much spoiler talk. because we want yeah. you to watch for uh, talk. <laughs> I, I think that we found a lot of success having a few people drive the change and, and have this model where you have a couple employees who are really excited. I'm one of them, woo, woo, but I'm also working with like, <laughs> working with some other people at Pinterest who are equally excited yeah. and doing uh, equal work and pushing Kotlin forward. Mm -hmm. And what we're finding there is that people like we are working in Kotlin every day and we're pushing code in Kotlin and the people who aren't are still learning from it because they're doing our code reviews and so we're seeing a lot of really really productive dialogues around Kotlin language features mm -hmm. and and style guides and and how we were implementing things in you know leveraging these new language features mm -hmm. um, even with people who are not Kotlin based right. and and so what's great about that is that you don't have to have everybody stop everything and get up to date on Kotlin and then continue, we're seeing education ripple out just as an artifact of having a couple people work in it. Mm -hmm. and, and the more they see, it seems like the more excited they're getting. Mm -hmm. So I've had people code review Kotlin and then say, Hey, can I use this? Like, are we are we gonna be able to work this into X feature? Yeah. And of course, the answer there is yes, you can use it. Um, but it, it's cool to see that transformation happen in terms of seeing the language in use, mm -hmm. seeing its benefits, and then organically saying, "I want to use this," mm -hmm. as opposed to kind of that top-down model of saying. You all have to learn Kotlin. This is the way it's going to be. Learn it now. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really like the the bubbling up effect that we have at Pinterest, and I think that it's been really effective. So I would recommend that to other companies as well. So are you able to are you able to actually implement like a particular feature in Kotlin while still having like maybe one dev maybe is working on like a feature branch in Kotlin, yeah. but another one is working on a separate feature in Java, and because of the interoperability, you can do both at the same time, Exactly. Right? That's really exactly. cool. Exactly. Yeah, and, and um, they're, they're very, very seamless. I'm not going to say there have never been hiccups, but overall, it's been incredibly seamless. I have no complaints about the interoperability. And also, I think the code reviews were a sticking point for, I'm working on video at Pinterest, for, in, uh, for instance, mm -hmm. and, and we have other people who are working on video, so there was a big question of, all right, if we ship all the video in Kotlin, is this going to hurt other developers who need to touch the video code? Right, right. But we haven't actually run into that because Kotlin is so readable and very similar to what they know already as mm -hmm. developers that they've been able to modify files that I've pushed um, and, and keep working right along with me and still review my code. And in fact, we've seen code reviews shift away from small details and into larger picture items because before Kotlin, of course, I had a lot of code reviews being like, is this nullable? Have you like maybe we should add a, a null check okay, just yeah. in case, yeah. or or are we sure that this is going to be this value at this time because this thread is mutating something something like that? And all of that is offloaded to the compiler now. And so when I get code reviews, uh, it's often at the bigger level, the organizational level, the naming level, uh, the optimization level, mm -hmm. instead of at the the smaller. Hey, you know what about this type or what about this null check or et cetera, et cetera. That, that sounds like an absolutely cool thing to be yeah. able to focus on structure and architecture rather yeah. than nitpicky like exactly corner cases and things exactly. like that so yeah oh that's so awesome well yeah. um i believe all the talks at droidcon new york will be recorded i think they will in a few weeks. so you should definitely if you're interested in kotlin at all and if you've ever wondered if you can bring kotlin into your project now obviously christina thinks the answer is yes so you Yay. should check out our talk <laughs> So uh, one of my favorite things about doing this channel is meeting cool people. So I'm going to go a little off topic. Oh, no. Using your Twitter <laughs> name, Run Christina Run. Uh, that is, yes, that it, is true. Your banner picture on your Twitter <laughs> um, feed is you, photo well, you photoshopped into Forrest Gump. And there's yep. a really good reason for that. And I would love yep. to talk to you about 
um, how you ran across the country. Yeah, so I did run across the country. It's actually almost the two year anniversary of that. Um, I left not too far from here, a little bit out that way. Um, <laughs> running from the Atlantic Ocean, started with my feet in the water and ran straight across the country, ended under the Golden Gate Bridge uh, with my feet in the Pacific Ocean. And it took five months to the day. Uh, and I, I had a baby stroller where I pushed all my stuff. Everybody always <laughs> asks, oh, did you have people with you? And no, like it was a solo trip, but I pushed all of my belongings in a baby stroller. It was a little easier than having it on your back. Amazing. And Christina, in, in general, just an amazing person, amazing <laughs> developer. And if people want to find you on the internet, how can yes. they do that, Christina? I think Twitter is always the best way. Cool. So as you mentioned before, at Run Christina Run, um, is, I'm trying to be pretty responsive, so you can find me there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Christina. Thanks for having me. Um, and uh, <laughs> thank you all. Um, actually, if uh, I probably shouldn't mention this just for I'm just because to, to make it seem like we actually are a smooth operation. But this is actually like the third time I've interviewed Christina. <laughs> um, and due to other technical problems or like you know like human problems, uh, we've lost the video. So this is actually like our third interview. So hopefully the third time's a charm. The third time's um, a charm. And I'm not gonna have to ask Christina back, but thank you all for sticking with us. Thank you, Christina, for sticking with me. Thanks for having me. And, <laughs> and we'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>